Hey everybody, happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. I'm Damon Collingsworth from California Carnivores. I'm technically the co-owner and general manager, but my favorite thing to do here is actually um, making new carnivorous plants from seed. So plant breeding is my absolute favorite thing. As I said in my short, I would come back over and over again, lifetime after lifetime, to this reality to play this game. It's just so fun crossing two different plants, planting those seeds, and then sometimes it takes three years, six years, eight years, but eventually you get to see what you made. And it's this like conveyor belt for me because it's something that I absolutely love. And I've made this conveyor belt that just constantly keeps making new things that I like. So it makes me really super happy. It's a lot of work and it's been a tremendous amount of work to put it all together. So don't be too envious, but it is really wonderful. And the good news is my machine also supplies um, a lot of carnivorous plants for everybody else. Anyways, today what I want to do is talk a little bit about um, how I make all these things and just show off some of the new creations. Um, some of them very small that I'm just selecting uh, this year and others that I uh, selected like years ago. Um, so I make lots and lots and lots of different Saracenia crosses every single year. Um, and it, you never really know what you're going to get. And the only way to do it is to plant out all those seeds and grow them all out and then select for which ones you think are the cool ones. So it uh, takes a couple of different skills. One of the skills is obviously growing these things because you can't get anything if you can't grow them. But the second big skill is a weird qualitative eye for what's special or beautiful. And it becomes this really amazing like psychedelic game of trying to make more beautiful carnivorous plants. Weirder, bigger Venus flytraps, you know, more like new pink flower colors that I've never seen before. Um, and so it really is this kind of like art form that you have to do through horticultural science. As I've said many times to lots of different people, that's one of the things I love about horticulture is it's an art and a science, but you also need a little magic in there to make it work out. Um, so let's just look at some Saracenia crosses that I did a while ago. This is one that I selected years ago. I super am in love with it. It's Willisai by Adrian Slack. Saracenia willisii is actually an old Victorian cross that was done in the late 1800s. It's one of the few Saracenia hybrids that is still in cultivation from that period. And uh, Adrian Slack is a very famous plant, uh, white-topped, red-lipped, green-bodied, flava-shaped plant named for Adrian Slack, who was um, basically the Peter D'Amato of England or vice versa, but it was basically um, really fundamental in getting the hobby going in England. Uh, any rays, I, what I love about this is this big, crazy, wide lip. It's got an interesting color, and I also like to make plants that transition through colors. So they open up like that, and then keep changing colors all season long. So when this, when this color's up, it will look even better. This one's flopped over, but you can kind of get an idea. It's going to be really super red, that lip, and the underside gets dark red too. But that one, I really love. Um, this is Leo Song by Flava Bullock County. There's several siblings of this cross that I kept. Um, it's one of my favorite crosses. I think I did this like something like 10 or 15 years ago, something like that. But I love the high um, lid like that. It just has something very proud and elegant about it. Plus the beautiful pinstriping color and the veins that go through the lid and the upturned uh, lip that matches the angle of the front of the lid. Those things to me just make it really super beautiful. And with Saracenia um, cultivars and crosses, what I'm really trying to do is create, um, I really feel like if you make the right Saracenia cultivar, it looks like a cartoon character. And you can kind of get like a certain feeling from that plant, if that makes sense. They have mouths, and so they, they think they can be kind of emotive. And so this one seems kind of stuck up. <laughs> This one seems kind of goofy and nice. This one I really love. This is just a Caddis B.I. cross that turned out really beautiful. It's lava by Perp. I love the color in the lid and I love this beaky little lip. It's so cool. I don't know if I've ever seen one do like that. I sometimes think I'll call that one bird brain. This is one of the things we're trying to get really good at. Um, I've put off naming these things for years even though I've been making them and so this year we have Allison pretty much working full-time on writing cultivar descriptions. Bob Seymour will be very happy about that and you guys too probably. Um, and then we're also just naming a lot more um, and putting it up on our webpage. It's cool we're naming it these days. Um, this is another cross. Um, 
Peter made this very famous cultivar called um, Deep Throat. It's the cover of the Savage Garden. Um, and so I've been really loving crossing that plant. This one is um, a rubra giant, rubricofensis giant by Ancestral. And I crossed that with Deep Throat. Uh, Rubrigolfensis ancestral, which I just named its own subspecies, but that plant has a very boxy mouth. Um, and when I crossed it with the giant Rubrigolfensis, it made this really tall Rubrigolfensis with a boxy mouth, a nice bronzy color. And so I was really excited to cross it with deep throat because they have very complementary forms. And this was my favorite out of that cross. We're gonna name it Pelican. Um, for those of you who don't know Saracenia very well, they open up in the spring a certain color and then kind of suntan into their full color. So I'm expecting all of these to be even darker red um, in a few weeks. But that one I'm really excited about. Um, this is a beautiful plant from last year that I just love. This is Luke Red by Minor Giant by Flava Bob Hanrahan. Uh, Luke Red by Minor Giant was actually a sibling to Deep Throat. It, uh, one of those became Prometheus that Jerry Addington is so famous for crossing with. Um, it's just a fantastic giant excellence, which is Luke by Minor. Um, and then Flava Bob Hanrahan, that's Flava Regalii Bob Hanrahan. Uh, we named that uh, plant for our old friend Bob. It's one of the nicest Regalii in cultivation with a lid that literally can be like that big. Um, but this one has taken all the like beautiful giant lid of Flava Bob Hanrahan and added all that color. And again, I just there's something so elegant and beautiful about the curve of that lid. It almost looks like a seashell or something like that. This one I literally just grabbed out a second ago. This is Danis Delight by Adrian Slack, so I think it'll get really dark red. But what I like about this one is it literally looks like it just like, you know, said something super sarcastic and mean to you. <laughs> I don't know, it just looks snide, I think is the word I'm looking for. Um, Another cross I did this year was we were, um, I have a Flava Cuprea Bill Hoyer by Minor Giant, which is like, it's over in the collection, but it has a big giant Merlot vaulted lid. Um, and I was able to cross that with Deep Throat as well. And so I've kept a lot of those. This one has like, I'll put it down so, stop shaking you. That one I like because it's dark red and it's got that cool deep throat mouth. This one has a cool shape too. And I like the dark throat that gets bigger. All these things will get taller too. I expect this one to top off at about like maybe two feet tall. Saracenia so crosses, you know, um, these ones are about, I think, two years old or a year old, something like that. It's about a year. Uh, and they'll be twice as big next year. Anyways, what's really amazing about that cross is how variable something like that can be with just a few parents. It's only three parents. Um, and some of them, the leucophylla really popped out. Like this one here almost looks like pure leucophylla and it's only really a third profile. And that's one of the really fun things is like trying to see, you know, when I make a cross, I usually have something in mind. Like in this case, this is kind of like what I wanted it to look like. And that always is very satisfying. And I always select those. But then also there's weird surprises. And like, oh gosh, then the weird surprises are kind of my favorites. Um, another really cool little cross. And then we'll probably, we'll do a few more here. This is Perp Burkai, a giant perp uh, Venosa Burkai crossed with Adrian Slack. And it's got like the Adrian Slack white color and pinkiness to it. It's really pretty. And then uh, this little one next to it's just got like a classic interesting look to it. I think that's Leah Wilkerson by Leucophila Wilkerson's Red Rocket. It's mostly Leucophila, which is really beautiful. There's a little Judith Hindle by Deep Throat here. So that's exactly what I want. It's got kind of like deep throat shape, with the little Judith Hindle upright lid and color. I like to make a lot of flavas, as everyone can attest to here. This is a beautiful Ruber Corpora. We'll have a wide mouth and it gets bigger. Lots and lots of Saracenia. And actually this entire room is full of Saracenia seedlings that I've made and those two rooms over there too. And so I have lots and lots of things to choose from. And the more things I make, the faster I could find really, really cool things to cross those with and make new things. And this isn't a commercial, but it's honestly true. The more plants that move out of this place, the, I immediately put a flat of new cool things right in its place so that we can find new cool stuff. So uh, it can always help our journey of finding new cool things. And I can't keep them all. I've tried for years, but I absolutely can't. And so I keep the best things usually, but it's qualitative. So you might think this is way better. 
and I can't keep the second or the third or the fourth and so lots of times things that look just like this can go out um, all the time actually. So don't be too, too downhearted. I'm not taking all the best, best, best things and you're just gonna get dumpy things. They're all really, really great, just to be clear. Um, anyways, that's it. That's probably enough about Saracenia. Um, of course, I'm gonna take you through and show you some new pain creations really quick. Uh, let's go move over there. Okay, so Daniela says I can't do 10 minutes on every single thing, so we're actually gonna try and make the things kind of short. But Pinguicula lauiana is a beautiful variable species. Um, it comes traditionally in the wild. When they first came out of the wild, there was a salmon, a fuchsia, and a red. I love making all kinds of new colors, new shapes. This is a really beautiful, bright, bright fuchsia with recurved leaves. We named that neon fuchsia. But then weirdly, this red one popped up in there too. This is a sibling. It's bright red, obviously. <laughs> but it also has the same recurved leaves. And then just next door, there's some other like kind of orangey lalianas here. But I'm always making new ones of those all the time. And then I'll go show you some hybrids over here. Too. All right, so I started um, hybridizing Pinguicula in 2009. My very first cross um, was uh, Pinguicula Ignata by Marginata. And that's actually, we've sold that for years. It's still a real winner even now. All of these are all flats of my um, pinks that I bred. Uh, mostly we run them through tissue culture, but, and then they come out here and then we harden them off and then we wait for them to flower. Some of them flower very quickly, like a marginata crosses will usually, you know, they could even sometimes flower in the jars. But uh, Laoyana crosses, Gigantea crosses, they can still take a couple of years to flower. And so it's sometimes a waiting game. Um, basically, as soon as they flower, I can see what they're going to look like and then assess it. And then that's when we decide, is it worth getting a really special name? Or is it just a beautiful plant that we should just uh, sell on the web page and probably not with very much fuss, you know? But a lot of times they are really super beautiful. And uh, this is one that's just got, this was blooming way heavier a couple weeks ago. But this is some of the largest flowers that made on Pinguicula so far. And we named that for um, Allison who works in the office called Pinguicula Alley Rose. One of, the, one of the really fun things about making new plants is you have to come up with all these new fun names and so why not name them for your friends that you love. And we're working on a Daniela one right now. <laughs> um, this one over here I named for Tiffany who packs the mail order. Everyone gets to pick what they want to call it. So um, I believe that one is uh, Tiffany, Tiffy's Neon Jamboree, which I absolutely love. And obviously I bet Daniela can't even focus on that flower because it's literally too pink to look at and no photos do it justice. There's this thing I'm trying to do with the Pinguicula and I have done successfully with numerous crosses now, which is make them neon. It literally looks like they're backlit with ultraviolet light and so your eyes have trouble focusing on them. They're so beautiful in person. Um, but lots and lots of other flowers here. This is Laoyana tangerine, crossed with cyclosecta and we're gonna, oops, we're gonna name that snozberry. I think we already have. But it will have purple leaves. One of the fun things about Pinguicula is the flowers are so beautiful, but also the leaves. So I make crosses with beautiful flowers, but then hopefully there's a pink, red, or purple leaves when thrown under strong light. And then they also make succulent rosettes. So um, some of the, when it gets dry in the winter, pings will, um, in order to survive the long, dry winter, they will make this little succulent rosette. These are actually succulent rosettes here. But then over here, this one is, um, we named Sleeping Hedgehog because when it's in a succulent rosette, it looks like a cute little hedgehog. The cross is actually, oh yeah, that's right. That's Gigantea Purple by Heterophylla. Two weirdly different ones. Anyways, lots and lots of different crosses and we make new ones every year. This is the game that I'm probably enjoying playing the most right now, but I do like playing them all. Um, let's go look at some fly traps real quick. So with the Venus fly traps, it's a game of making vicious looking ones, weird ones, and really, really giant ones. Um, so this is a, these are fly traps from our breeding program from last year. It just came out of the lab probably around February. And now they're growing out so we can take a look at them. This one here is obviously giant. I mean, it's only a few months old and it's huge. So that cross is ginormous by Titan. Titan is probably, that is one hell of a fly trap. I gotta say that came from Best and that's like the biggest one out best that I've seen. It has long petioles and really big traps. We noticed it right away once we started growing it here. And ginormous is my big giant selection, which is also one hell of a fly trap. It's two hells in there, not three. 
Um, so what I did is I crossed those together, obviously, it's kind of a no-brainer. And this one is already showing a lot of potential, but lots of these are different seedlings that we're growing out to check. This one here is, I think that one's ginormous by Godzilla, it is. Godzilla is one that we made a couple of years ago that we barely released, actually. We only made a few numbers on that, but it's a giant bristle tooth one that looks like the back of Godzilla. And then I crossed that with ginormous to see if we could like supersize that one up one more time. And it's looking promising, probably we will. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the front line of California carnivores, um, uh, Venus flytrap breeding program. And let's see, I think there's like a couple more things I could show you. Daniela, bear with me. We're just gonna go like really quickly at some Nepenthe seedlings. Hey guys, so I've had a lot more time lately and I started doing a lot more Nepenthes crosses. And I wanted to show off how we do that and just some of the guys growing out down here really quick. Um, I was really excited to make these. It's Nepenthes ventricosa by Maikai. So Nepenthes Maikai is beautiful, little spotty black, almost black pictures with the green lip, but it's very shy to bloom. So you don't see a lot of Maikai crosses out there. And ventricosa is always a really good partner for Nepenthes. It's actually, I think, an underrated species. Very beautiful, red waxy pictures and really easy and forgiving to grow. And so we're expecting these to have really nice black coloring, um, but be easy to grow, kind of similar to Matt Soper's little Rebecca Soper plant. And those are about a year old. And then over here, I have some other smaller guys. These little guys up here are Nepenthes spathulata by Edwardsiana, which I'm really excited about. Um, down here are a full ton of Nepenthes ventricosa by um, Edwardsiana. Um, again, not a commercial, but we started selling our Nepenthes seeds, and so we actually sold a few of those this last year. So you guys might be growing those at home too. Um, up here are some other ones, are a little bit older. Oh, this is the Maxima that used to be known as um, Ime that came from BE but then wasn't Ime. And then I crossed it with the giant red sanguinea from Exotica. I'm actually really excited about those. There's some probably nicer ones up here um, that are growing out. And those are about a year old too. So expect a lot more really cool Nepenthes crosses from us too. Anyways, that's a little window into what I love to do here the most, which is, like I said, making new carnivorous plants. Oh, I forgot about this thing. This is, I'm really excited about. This is a little variegated Nepenthes seedling. It's Nepenthes spectabilis by Rob Cantley, I actually. So I grew this, um, it's probably a few months old, and it was variegated when it was like on its second leaf, and so I pulled it aside right away. But as it gets bigger, pink stripey variegation, and it'll have really big pictures like that. So I look at this one almost every single day, We'll keep you posted on its progress. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about my carnivorous plant world here. Happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. And, you know, go grow a whole bunch. If you're just watching from the sidelines, stop that. Go grow some. The International Carnivorous Plant Society wants you to be successful with your plants. We welcome growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. We started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate these spectacular plants. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite. But our plants do.